own or family. This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good day from New York right now. President Biden and President-elect Trump are meeting at the White House. It's a tradition for presidents to host their successors after an election. But we did not see a meeting like this in 2020 as Trump refused to concede that election. Mr. Trump is also meeting today with Republicans in Washington as he prepares to return to power. Uh, here is the moment that Biden and Trump met just moments ago. We're going to get a chance to talk about some of that today. So. Good. Welcome. Welcome Thank back. you. And, uh, Thank you very much. And uh, politics is tough. And it's, uh, in many cases, not a very nice world. But it is a nice world today. And I appreciate it very much. And a transition that's so smooth, it'll be as smooth as it can get. And uh, I very much appreciate that, Jim. You're welcome. Thank you all. This video taken just uh, moments ago, the uh, two men sitting down there at the fire, the, their discussions continuing off camera. And you can hear the shouted questions from reporters. Uh, neither uh, seem to take uh, any of the questions. I want to bring uh, Chief White House correspondent Peter Alexander to the mix here. Uh, Peter, who else was meeting uh, as part of the session? Well, let's let's walk you through this for a moment, if we can, Lester. For Donald Trump, this really marks the culmination of a comeback just over a week after he defeated Kamala Harris to become the 47th president of the United States. It is a return to a tradition that has uh, dated back decades, where one president meets with the incoming president-elect here in the White House. As you note, it did not happen four years ago when Joe Biden would be taking power from Donald Trump. It did happen when Barack Obama invited Donald Trump eight years ago. Ago. I'm told by folks here at the White House that the way this morning played out, and again, to be clear, that was a very short moment where we had an opportunity to see these two. Eight years ago, the two spoke before the cameras for as long as four minutes. This one, I think you could count in a matter of seconds. But when Donald Trump arrived here at about 11 o'clock this morning, we were told that President Biden greeted him at the South Portico just outside the White House, that the two entered the diplomatic room. That's where traditional greetings take place with foreign heads of state. And then the two walked down the famed column together to the Oval Office where that meeting is now taking place inside the Oval Office. Eight years ago between Obama and Trump, it lasted about 90 minutes. I'm told by White House officials there is no clock set on today how long the two will meet privately behind closed doors. Of course, I'll leave it to others to sort of measure the tone and the expressions and the body language between these two. But Lester, that was, uh, I guess you could say, at a minimum, an exchange of pleasantries after uh, the last several years where it has been anything but pleasant the way these two have spoken about one another. Donald Trump has referred to Joe Biden as weak and pathetic and a loser and worse. Some language we can't share with you on uh, daytime television. Joe Biden casting Donald Trump as a threat both to this nation and to democracy. I am told that they would be joined in this meeting at least by their chiefs of staff. Susie Wiles, who helped run the campaign for Donald Trump, would be in attendance as well as Jeff, uh, Jeff Zients, the chief of staff for Joe Biden. Unclear whether other individuals would be in that room as well. We'll wait to gather that information uh, as the day progresses. Notably not in attendance today is Melania Trump. She did come with her husband back in 2016 as the Obamas greeted the Trumps, then Melania Trump's office in a statement saying today that she would not be attending, saying in her in the office's words that the visit was, quote, encouraging and about her husband saying that she wishes him great success, which leaves open the question about what role she will play in a Trump um, administration, whether she will be managing the East Wing and living here at the White House alongside of her husband. No answers to those questions at this point. Lester, we're going to get more details as they come. I should note as one sort of piece of color here, there have not been this many reporters and cameras from not just the United States, but around the world since Donald Trump left office. The short walk from me to the West Wing, you'll hear languages from around the world. Many 
many of whom are anticipating the potential that Donald Trump could walk outside the West Wing and speak to reporters after that meeting is done. No indication whether that will occur, but it does sort of pull back the curtain on the scene after this historic campaign season. All right, uh, Peter Alexander, as we continue to look at these pictures uh, taken just moments ago, what appears to be a cordial meeting between the two, at least uh, what we're seeing in front of the cameras here. For more on the Trump transition now, let me bring in our senior Washington correspondent, Hallie Jackson. Uh, Hallie, I think you could, you could fairly say this transition, at least uh, in terms of naming potential cabinet members, is happening at a breakneck speed. Yeah, the president-elect is moving very quickly here, Lester, uh, to name some of the key positions, the people who will be his inner circle, his brain trust come 2025. And like you, I'm taking a look at some of these images that we are just getting now from the Oval Office, this historic moment. I'm also looking to see who else is in the room. Peter mentioned Susie Wiles, Jeff Zients, uh, the chiefs of staff. No Elon Musk here uh, that we can tell, although we know that Elon Musk, of course, the world's richest man, somebody who's become an outside advisor to President-elect Trump, did travel with him to another event here in Washington earlier earlier today with House Republicans. So let's talk about the transition, right? Because this is something, while we have all seen Donald Trump in the White House previously, his next administration will not look like his first, Lester, for a number of reasons, including the fact that he is bringing in a number of close loyalists, allies, people who have stuck with him despite his election fraud lies that he, that he put out there after 2020 and his legitimate loss, people who he believes are true MAGA believers and who will fight for him uh, on the international stage and domestically. Of the big four cabinet positions, He's named two, uh, at least one officially, and that is Pete Hegseth. This is a controversial choice. He is best known for being a Fox News host. He will lead the Department of Defense, according to the Trump Vance administration, according to the president-elect himself. He is a veteran himself, Hegseth, but he doesn't have that kind of traditional DOD Pentagon experience. Uh, there's a question mark on the confirmation, the Senate confirmation ahead for him, so, so you see him there. He, we also understand, based on our reporting, that Florida Senator Marco Rubio is set to be named Secretary of State. That official announcement from the campaign has not come yet, but it seems to be pretty locked in at this point. Senator Rubio, when asked this morning, did not address this. He said he would defer, of course, to the president-elect's team to make that decision. We're still waiting on who might be named Treasury, Secretary of the Treasury, and who might be named the next Attorney General to lead the Justice Department. And those are two really crucial roles, considering the president-elect Trump has talked a lot when it comes to the economy, about tariffs, about what he wants to do to, in his view, improve the economy. And he also has <laughs> talked about uh, uh, what, what his Department of Justice may do. That may be the leading edge for what critics have described as his call for retribution upon political opponents. So those are some question marks here. Beyond that, we also know that even just this morning, he's installed some allies inside the White House, inside the executive branch with him, including a name that may be familiar to our audience, Stephen Miller. He is considered an immigration hardliner. He is likely to have a big role in shaping immigration policy. This was, we know, one of the things that did help propel President-elect Trump back to the White House. I mentioned I mentioned Elon Musk earlier, Lester, so let me just say this. Both he and Vivek Ramaswamy are being tapped to be what you could call like outside consultants, basically advisors to the White House uh, for what is being called the Department of Government Efficiency, D-O-G-E or DOGE, and the crypto fans among us may recognize that. This is uh, a bit of a tongue-in-cheek nod to sort of the crypto sphere and the fact that both of these people, Vivek Ramaswamy, former rival for the presidency, Elon Musk, world's richest man, will be tapped to try to help find safe savings, cost savings. This is something that President-elect uh, Trump talked about frequently on the campaign trail. Lester. All right, Hallie Jackson. Hallie, thanks. That concludes this NBC News special report. We'll have much more ahead on our streaming network, NBC News Now, online at NBCNews.com. And a full wrap-up when I see you back here for NBC Nightly News. I'm Lester Holt in New York. Thank you for watching, everyone. Have a good day.